and um, um, a few verses, first couple of verses, and also you know uh, verse thirteen. Okay, so um, Romans fifteen. So it says, um, "We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification." Okay and goes on to explain how Christ was our example for patience, etc. Um, so verse 5, Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded towards one another, according to Christ Jesus, that you, you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, that Those are verses 5 and 6. And verse 13, here in Romans 15, verse 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the holy spirit right so paul starts by exhorting and he's uh, instructing he's saying you who are strong you need to bear with those who are weak and uh, the scruples of the weak meaning uh, the limitations the um, the things that they do um, you know some of the things which are uh, maybe not right even um, you bear with the weak and then let each of us please his neighbor for his good and uh, says now may the god of patience and comfort okay so uh, we see that god is the god or maybe uh, you know he's saying god is the source of patience and comfort and may he grant you to be like-minded so we need the patience comes from him we need the comfort that comes from him and he, he prays saying may he grant you um this ability to be like-minded towards one another and uh, according to the lord jesus um so that you may be with unity that you may glorify god and then verse 13 now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, you know, we've been dealing with, um, uh, we've been talking about winning with people and we've been talking about, uh, you know, how we can, um, you know, uh, how we can understand others, how we can work with others, um, how we can, um, you know, better our perspective of others and so on. And this is something which is very, very powerful because we see that um, God is the God of patience and comfort. God is the God of hope and, uh, and, he can fill us with joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope and uh, and then you know we can do what god wants us to do when it comes to dealing with people that we can please our neighbor for their good for their edification that we can bear with the scruples of the weak and uh, that we can be like-minded towards one another right so we see that um, for the believer, uh, this is this is great news because uh, you know uh, in our flesh, uh, maybe uh, with our personalities or temperament, it is not possible. But uh, with God, God being the God of patience and hope, God being the God of uh, uh, God of comfort, you know, when He fills us with joy, when He fills us with His peace, you know, we can we can reflect Christ and be uh, who he wants us to be, right? So, so let's just pray and ask God to fill us with his love, with his joy, with his peace, um, that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, abound in hope, not just psyching ourselves, abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that um, you are the God of hope, that you are the God of comfort and patience and master we thank you that um, you have exhorted us god to be like-minded or with to be um, with one heart and one mind when it comes to people to or to be patient lord and uh, and all this master we thank you that we can do it with the power of the holy spirit we thank you with your power residing in us, Lord, with your power Lord, like a mighty river, Lord, flowing out of us. God, we know that we can do this, God. And uh, we just want to um, ask you to fill us this morning, Lord, fill us with your love, fill us with your joy, uh, fill us with your peace, God. 
And I just pray that the fruit of the Spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit will be formed in us. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. Yes, Lord, we pray that, uh, Lord, you would sharpen us, Lord, as leaders, God, that you would sharpen us uh, as influences, oh, Father God, in this aspect, oh, Master, Lord, um, Lord, when it comes to interacting, dealing, Lord, in all our relationships with people, Father God, we pray that, Lord, that you would sharpen this, that you would, um, Lord, uh, Lord, really mature, oh, God, this ability, Father God. And I just pray that, um, Lord, this will be formed in each one of us, Lord, um, and it will be, uh, we will mature in this area, God. And I just pray, even for those of us who have, um, who have just canceled ourselves saying this is not possible or, you know, I cannot work with people, uh, Lord, I pray for a fresh uh, or impartation of hope. Father God, Lord, may we abound in hope by the power of your spirit in all our relationships, God, whether it's family, friends, or whether it's ministry or professionally, God, we pray that we may abound in hope by the power of your spirit. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, welcome back, those who joined us now. Um, Okay, we'll continue from where we left off, um, uh, where we uh, stopped last class. Uh, I think we looked at, uh, we were looking at um, uh, nurturing relationships, right? We looked at the gardening principle and we looked at the 101 principle, uh, John C. Maxwell talking about, you know, who's that one person to whom you can, or that, you know, that uh, those people who, to whom you can invest 101% in them. So, um, you know, obviously we can't do it to a lot of people. We can do it to a few and we need to choose and invest that, right? Like a spouse or family or, um, you know, someone to whom we are mentoring and so on. Okay. Um, he also talks about in the same thing uh, about patience, right? About patience being a principle, about patience being a virtue that we need to have in you know, in in a big measure, while while interacting with people, okay. Um, Ephesians four and verse two says, uh, "With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love." Right. Um, the, I mean, the the downside of patience is that it is it is it is put on display in the most unlikely of circumstances, the 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 circumstances that demand you know our patience. Right. So, um, so that's, that's the thing, you know, with people who, who require patience and then patience is put on display. Right. Um, the thing we need to understand is while working with people, um, well, definitely, uh, you know, we can do things. Maybe we can, we, 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 we sometimes feel that, yes, you know, there are certain things that I can do things where I can do it quicker. I can do it better. And, uh, you know, I can journey on faster. Um, I remember, uh, you know, uh, uh, a person in church telling me, you know, Pastor, I would have gone so far, you know, if not for my family, you know, if not for my spouse and children, um, you know, saying that, you know, I would, have, I would have grown so much, I would have done so much, you know, if not, you know, they are, they are holding me back. Well, the reality is, the truth is that uh, family is God's design, you know, uh, spouse, children, God's design. And yes, the dynamics change right? when you're in, a, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a marriage kind of a relationship, when you have family, the dynamics change, right? The pace of things change, uh, the season changes, and we need to understand, you know, um, uh, how we can, we need to work or cooperate with the spirit in that season to see how we can be effective and um, how we can be fruitful because well god is the same you know maybe uh, our expectations need to change it needs to come in line with god and so on so patience is uh, uh, is something that's very very important right so um when we realize that yes things have things are slowing down because of other people you know things are uh, you know i'm not able to go further and i'm i'm required to display this virtue of uh, being patient with people, you know, and, and it, it is biblical. We see that, uh, you know, the, 
the passage that we read just now, Romans chapter 15, talks about patience and because God is the God of patience and how he has been patient with us, you know, the same patience, if we can extend to others, you know, there will be times when, you know, it, it is it is very difficult, right? But we, when we extend patience, um, then we nurture that relationship that that relationship definitely thrives and flourishes um you know because of our uh, patience with them right so um you know just consider some uh, event in your life or something that you went through which really demanded patience okay for you to be patient with the other person and uh, and maybe that was taken for granted you know that was taken for granted that was uh, uh that was not that really didn't go on go down well and because of which you know you decided you made a decision saying i will not be so okay so so there's a you know the right way of being patient there is a again a wrong way of being patient so let's talk about that for a minute okay um okay oh i realized i didn't share the notes fine let's let's um you know let's talk about that um and when it comes to patience, patience is not being passive, right? Patience is not being passive in the sense um, it's it's not just your uh, you know you know you're not involved or engaged uh, in in the situation or in the lives of people. No, that is not patience. Um, it's it's just being very uh, passive and not reacting, not uh, you know all this uh, you know and all the while you could be boiling stirred up on the inside uh, so that is not patience patience is also you know patience done right is really uh, communicating with the person right with the team um you know maybe uh, patience is also you know not um in, in, if you don't communicate the truth or if you don't communicate the expectation if you don't communicate what's you know what is um, what needs to be done you know and now that is uh, if, if you don't communicate it that that doesn't mean that we are patient you no know, we need to do that we need to communicate it we need to communicate the the timeline and uh, and you know be patient as people work through it you know as people work through their mistakes people work through their limitations um you know uh, so that is the right way of uh, of being uh, patient so so i just want to hear from you you know if you have if you have anything to share about uh, you know patience not being done right you know the bible calls us to be patient and uh, maybe you know you know in a professional setting or even in a ministry setting you know we might think okay in a ministry setting it's fine you know you can be all you can be you know uh, you know or you can have or exercise all the patience you want but actually it's not so right uh, there are uh, there are uh, things to be completed within a certain time frame and uh, you know that is uh, that is required that is the expectation and we need to do that okay so um, so when you when you don't do that you know uh, and uh, um, when you when you when you continue on that line you know not doing it not not meeting with expectations now um, now that can't go on forever you know that doesn't mean that okay so one day when you say okay you know we have seen this repeatedly and then this needs to end so that doesn't mean the person is being impatient right so enough chances or opportunities were given expectations uh, were um, shared and uh, and and through it all you know uh, the organization or the team has been has been very patient right so um so any thoughts uh, i just love i'd love to hear from us um uh, you know maybe you can talk about patients done right or patients not done right also yeah I'd just like to hear from you any thoughts It can be a work situation. It can be any other, you know. Um, okay, Sam. Patience. It's not just waiting, but how we wait or how we behave while we wait. Something I heard from. Okay, okay. What we do in the meantime. Right, right, right. Thanks. Well, it's Sam's birthday today. Many happy birthday, Sam. <laughs> 
It's not. I think it's the dev is incorrect. I'm sorry. What? I think dates are wrong in the database. Oh, in the database is it? <laughs> okay, we need to change that. Yeah, um, it's in August. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just tell me? I'll uh, I'll change it after the class. So, what is the exact date? Um, is um, it like fourth August? Twenty. Uh, oh, um, it's not clear. Maybe you can put it on the chat. I'll take that. Yeah, I'll I'll change it. Um, I saw the prompt today, then I thought, uh, okay. Okay, so Anita's sharing, uh, after the birth of my child, I have learned patience in the real sense. Okay, 20th August. Okay, um, just make a note of it. Just one second. Um, and the year is the same, I guess. Um, so I'm... Okay. Right, after the birth of your child. That's true. Um, uh, yeah, you you realize you can't rush them. You know, certain times you can't uh, you can't push them, uh, especially when they are very young. Right, and I remember you know taking my child to school and uh, wanting my daughter to just get ready fast. There's only 15 minutes. You need to get dressed, have your breakfast, and go. But it doesn't happen that way. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, I think one when one becomes a parent, um, you learn or you have loads and loads of patience right yeah so say i think wanted to say something say you put your hands up uh, oh, oh yeah Pastor, i was just going to bring up the example you gave in one of our classes about um one of the choir members or was it the choir director who you had to sit down with i mean in, you would have exercised patient and just said oh he would change but it was going to be detrimental to the whole group so you had mm. to take action so that's, yeah. to me, patience done right. An example of patience done wrong is um, you're waiting for a particular kind of job. Um, maybe it's an, an engineering job. And um, basically, you just sit at home, you know, and say, oh, you're patient and you're waiting for a, a job as an engineer. But whereas you have other skills you can leverage on in the meantime, right? So just sit in. And waiting, to me, isn't patient, but engaging, doing something valuable with your time, I think it's um, described and still holding on, you know, for that engineering job or whatever particular um, field of endeavor one would like to be doing something while that comes, you know, that's to me is right, um, the right way to be patient. So just okay. something. Yeah, like thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I think being patient with oneself, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else? Uh, if you have any real life examples that you'd like to share, um, that would be great. Okay. How many of you say that you are, you know, you can pride yourself on being patient? That you're really patient with us. Can I see your hands? Can... No one. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. So Chris says yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not. Um, you know, it's not. It's not a very pleasant thing in the sense. Uh, okay, Avni says not yet. You know, we have. We all have expectations. We all have. You know, a, a mental picture of okay, this is what patience is, and I've not reached yet. Um, and uh, I, I guess that's how it will be. You know, we'll we'll all be a, you know, a, a level of patience. Uh, we'll all display a level of patience, um, uh, and uh, and it it'll it'll continue to be a journey, right? Um, and Rupa says, okay, I've learned it over the years. Yes. So um, so. The thing is to to know the fine line between uh, you know patience and being just being passive or just not engaging, um, and also the the importance of you know when it comes to relating to others, the importance of communication. You know even uh, even to communicate um, you know the expectation and say okay, um, it's fine this time, right? It's just go ahead. 
um, you know, here's another opportunity, here's another chance, uh, go ahead and, and, you know, to communicate that, right? It's very important. So that kind of reiterates to you as well and to the other person, okay? Um, um, you know, the other exa exa principles that we learned earlier, like the exchange principle, you know, like to put ourselves in the other person's shoes helps, right? Um, but what really makes it complex is that though we want to you know be understanding in a professional setting um, there is the bigger picture of the uh, expectation of the organization the objectives of the organization that needs to be met so um, so you know how do you balance both right um, so that's that's a um, uh, that's the important thing you know that's that's a difficult thing rather um, well Personally, you can be patient with the person, but you need to, in a professional manner, you know, communicate that as well um, and say, okay, this is the expectation, okay? Um, and these are the opportunities given. This is the timeline given. And uh, and within that, you will be, you know, uh, you will wait and watch, right? Um, and at the same time, you know, we can do what what is required to, um, uh, to uh, yeah, I see that Rupa. I'm still learning about patience. Yes, so um, so and 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 also we can do our bit about uh, to equip the person, you know, to train the person, to upskill up the person, so that they can get better at what they are doing. Right? Um, yeah. So of course, you know, just focusing on skill and ability, which when people uh, are unable to uh, measure up which tests our patients at times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how many of you can say that I never get bored when I'm waiting for something? Let's say, you know, you're waiting for a train or a, or something. Okay, Sam says, okay, he's never bored. Um, okay, Rupa says, you're never bored, okay. Let's say the train is delayed or the, the bus is delayed, you know, the tra transportation is built, delayed. Um, how many of you can say that you are never bored? You know, you, okay, so I see Kennedy, uh, Avni also. Okay, yeah. I think th those are small steps, you know, um, to really exercise our patience. Um, you know, if you're in a place like um, like Bangalore, and uh, you know, to in many places there are there are queues. There's always a queue, so it really oh, even in traffic jams, wow, <laughs> uh, that's something. Uh, so you know, in a place like Bangalore, you you have plenty of opportunities to develop patience, right? The minute you step out of the house, you want to go someplace. Uh, the roads are choked, and uh, you know. But I think those those can really help us. You know, those are opportunities to help uh, being patient uh, with others. Okay, okay. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, you know, even though it's, um, you know, uh, it's 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 you know, it's to talk about it to discuss it, it's fine. But then when we put into practice, we know the the reality of it. We know the challenges that come with it, and uh, and also. Um, yeah, so Rupa says preparation to wait helps, you know, telling ourselves that, yeah, that this will take time and this might, you know, uh, take this duration. Yeah, preparing ourselves uh, helps. That's true. Okay. okay. Let me just share the screen and um, we look at a couple of more uh, principles. The, uh, you know, this is the celebration principle. Okay. So, um, when, when interacting with people or when working with teams, when you know, relating to people, the celebration principle is very important. You know, you know, when we celebrate others' victories, okay? many times our lives are wrapped around ourselves, right? Um, what we do, the focus is on ourselves. Uh, we don't realize it. Many, many times it's that way. Um, uh, because a lot depends on you know what you need to do, what you need to produce, what you need to submit, uh, and so on. So the focus can be you know on ourselves to a to a large extent, right? Um, so when we become other focused, when we esteem others better than ourselves, when you look out for the you know as scripture says, when we look out for the interests of others um, in addition to our own, 
you know, we become other focused. And one way to really be other focused is to celebrate the victories, you know, celebrate the wins, however small or however, you know, uh, big it is to celebrate the wins. And it's important to do that. Right. Uh, Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. You know, as much as uh, we want, we would, you know, uh, be with people, empathize with people, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, in, in times of uh, defeat, in times of difficulties. Uh, so also uh, during our times of, uh, uh, you know, wins and to celebrate this really, uh, you know, especially in a team setting, we're going to look at teamwork. Uh, especially in a team setting, it really you know boosts the morale of the person, encourages the person, um, and uh, you know and helps the uh, helps the person to go further than they thought possible, right? To celebrate the wins. Okay, so the high road principle um, is uh, is another thing which is hard on our flesh, right? Is not to retaliate, okay, but to take the high road even when we are treated poorly. And uh, we still treat our others with respect. How we how we would like to be treated in such circumstances. And First uh, Peter three and verse nine: Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Okay. So the thing is to um, to understand that uh, you know we are we are. Our calling is different. We are called to live life, uh, a supernatural life. So when we talk about a supernatural life, it is about signs, wonders, and miracles. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is to live a life that is Christ-like, right? And uh, it is not only in a you know, very insulated church setting, but it is uh, everywhere. You know, it could be family. It could be the marketplace. It is to, to live um, you know, in a dog-eat-dog dog kind of a world to live this. Uh, and we have biblical principles uh, or biblical examples of people who who live so, right, right in the midst of um, like the court of Nebuchadnezzar uh, and other pagan rulers like where Daniel lived. And, uh, you know, it, it, it would be very interesting to see what, what his day was like you know, how he started the day, how he had his team meetings, how he, you know, uh, went through the, went through some of his decisions and how he would communicate that with the teams. Um, you know, it, it, that's something that I'd like to really, you know, watch and see and probably ask Daniel, you know, how he did it uh, when we, you know, when I meet him. Uh, so, you know, so that's, uh, we have been empowered by the spirit to really live that kind of life. So as leaders, as influencers, um, we don't have to shelve this for, uh, for a, you know, for a Sunday or for, a, you know, for a fellowship, for a life group meeting. We don't have to shelve this. We can put it to test in the marketplace, right? Um, right, right there, you know, uh, sometimes, um, Sometimes we, I mean, we are not treated fairly in the sense. Um, uh, I remember once an appraisal which went really bad in the sense. Uh, 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 I mean, sorry, not not an appraisal went good. Okay, this was uh, an interaction with the boss. So, so the boss was like, um, he was very upset uh, that um, you know uh, I was kind of sticking out. You know, I was not really you know being part of the group when it came to parties and when it came to you know things so so he uh, he was a little um, you know it was during a party it was uh, you know he was a little high uh, he had been drinking everybody was drinking and so he just made a comment saying you know you you know you could you don't do this you don't do this you know you can't uh, you know uh, uh, a few things and I was I was feeling very upset you know I just went home I was like oh god what is this you know I was just trying to uh, do my best uh, and um, you know I was a I was, I was not a mature believer, but I was, you know, I had my issues that I was dealing with, but still, you know, this really stung, you know, uh, uh, especially from, you know, from a boss that you look up to and uh, uh, he, he was, he was, he was fine. Otherwise, you know, a very strong work ethics, um, a person of integrity, but this comments, these comments that he made, you know, really stung. So, um, so I was, 
I was I was angry. I was upset. Went through all those emotions. You know, who's he to talk like that and and etc. Uh, but then just realized, you know, I'm just going to be quiet about it. I'm not going to you know get back uh, or say something nasty, but just be quiet about it. And uh, and I remember, you know, uh, he after a few months. Um, sitting across uh, the table and we were going through an appraisal and he wrote down you know he has the capacity to work with any kind of boss or any you know a uh, boss of whatever you know any uh, kind of a boss he can work with and i i remember you know writing that and uh, so he didn't say anything he just smiled he just uh, you know signed that appraisal and uh, it, it went well so the thing is this uh, to take the high road you know it's it's not always easy uh, while our flesh, uh, flesh is all out and just wants to, you know, um, uh, destroy that person, wants to go at it and uh, and put that person in place for what they did or what they said. But when we take that high road, you know, we know that we have um, someone else backing us, right? So that's the thing. You know, how will we see it being accomplished unless we unless we walk it right um so we we don't have to uh you know whatever setting it is you know the truth of god's word works in whatever setting it could be so um we don't have to hold back we don't have to compromise and we can ask for the wisdom of god how do i do this right okay so it, it demands wisdom um so how do i do this right and how, how i you know how how do I do it? So um, so this is something that we see. You know, uh, so it, we need to uh, be committed to continually treat people well uh, and um, treat them right. Okay, um, and it, it it requires right the, the the power of God it, for us to um, draw from uh, the you know the, the power of God, the Word of God. Uh, in a very interesting verse. You know, we've been studying this in our um, uh, Colossians uh, class uh, as we've been doing the study. You know, Colossians chapter 1 talks about this. Um, in the prayer that Paul prays uh, for the church in Colossae, for the believers there, he says that, um, you know, uh, for this reason, we also, since the day... Um, so he, he prays that prayer you know, from verse 9 onwards. And in verse uh, verses, uh, this is increasing. I mean, sorry, this is interesting. In verse 11, he says, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Okay. So strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. And that both those words, you know, might, power, talks about dunamis, you know, the, the supernatural power of God. So he's saying, you know, you be strengthened with that supernatural power of God, and you be, um, you know, uh, um, strengthened with all uh, might and um, according to his glorious power, according to, it's not like any other thing that you can compare with, according to his glorious power, may you be strengthened. And what's interesting is um, what follows next, right? Verse 11, the second part, for all patience and long suffering with joy. You know, so that's um, I don't know. You know, if we can make that connection, you know, it's talking about the supernatural power of God, uh, the supernatural, you know, the wonder working, the signs, miracles, wonders, flowing power of God, amazing, and that is what we, you know, need, uh, which we see in Ephesians six. You know, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, and put on the armor and stand. You know, for all against all the wiles of the enemy. So here, it's talking about being strengthened according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering you know, to be christ like to display these characteristics that we've been talking about the same supernatural power of god you know uh, is uh, is what paul prays you know which means that this is what will help you to display the um, the patience and the long suffering and not just grit your teeth and go with it but to to do do so with joy right to do do so with that that simmering low grade you know uh, stirring up joy inside of you 
that you will do that and 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 live that out so it's an amazing uh, truth that um that we as believers that we when we have the holy spirit um living in us you know many times we don't really lean in right um but if we would lean in to the power of the holy spirit and we would depend on the power of the holy spirit then what we would display would be totally you know different right so um yeah so so that is something that uh, that we can do we have access to and praise god we can do that as leaders right um so let's look at uh, another thing as we go forward uh, to create a win win relationships okay um you know what we see is that uh, especially in in uh, you know in the professional business relationships well yes people do look at win win but the definition of win win could change you know i win big and you win you know things um uh, and or sometimes it'll be like i i i win but you know uh, you don't win at all right um so when it comes to working with people when it comes to relationships with people um how do we have a win win relationship or is it even possible right so you might think okay you know uh, maybe in a in a business kind of a thing you know this this whole imbalance is there but it can happen in any kind of relationship right not just uh, you know in a secular setting so called secular setting um you know this is imbalance of not having a win win relationship it can it can happen anywhere you know in a ministry setting also i need to get this done and uh, you know that is all that matters you know it, that imbalance can be there so because we're all people right um so so that's the thing so we're going to look at how can we have a win win a creating intentionally a win win uh, relationship okay so um so let's watch the video um i'll share the video we'll we'll watch the video where john c maxwell talks about uh, four kinds of uh, four principles rather and we'll take a look at that okay um let me share that oh wait, what's the time okay we have 10 minutes All right i'll stop it in 10 minutes okay synergy the highest level of relationships where we have to ask the question can we create a win-win relationship for people principles number 22 the boomerang principle when we help others we help ourselves or as andrew carnegie said no man becomes rich unless he enriches others The question I must ask myself is do I experience a return when I help others? Too many times people approach life like a slot machine. They want to put as little in as possible and hopefully get a lot in return. There are three types of people I've noticed. There are number one takers. Now takers receive and never give. Many people focus on themselves and rarely go out of their way to do anything for others and such people are takers. They worry only about what they can get and they're never satisfied. Then there are traders. Receive and then give. Some people focus on keeping score. They are willing to give, but their primary motivation isn't to help others. They see relationships as an exchange. Often they give because they think they owe something to someone. who has helped them and they desire to make things even. Number 3, investors. They give and then receive. In the third group, people focus on others. They give first and then they receive something if something is offered in return. They believe that success comes from being helpful, caring and constructive. They desire to make everything and everyone they touch better and they understand that the best way to accomplish that is to give of themselves. Ironically, by 
possessing an agenda to give first, they're the ones who most often experience the synergy of a win-win relationship. So what do investors do? One, they thank others first. And two, they don't expect short-term gain. And number three, they invest in people with potential. Let me just stop here for a moment. In 1995, I spent six months making a list of 10 people that I would invest in. It took me quite some time to settle in on those that I should really do this with. To be honest with you, I, I, I took a spiritual route and I did some prayer, but I also just tried to observe and tried to, to find people that, that I especially thought had greater potential than me, that if I would serve them and if I would just invest in them, the return would be pretty huge. And I determined that I would never tell them that they were on my list. I would just invest in them. I can tell you, I started that in 1995. The list has somewhat changed. Of the 10 that I started off with, there are four still on the list. But through the process of time, some I helped for a period of time, and then I felt that I had invested in them as much as I could to help them in the areas that I could help them in, and, and many of them have gone on to do just tremendous things. And so I would add, as I would drop one off, I would add another one. Ten people. They to this day don't know. They never will. The satisfaction is in me knowing that I'm giving, expecting nothing in return. And then as I watch them do well, the reward is amazing. Now, they're not doing well just because of my investment. In fact, to be honest with you, most of them are very confident they would do well without my investment. But they're doing better because of my investment. And I know that. That's what I'm talking about in this whole issue of investing in people. If you do those three things, think of others first, don't expect short-term gains, invest in people with potential. Number four is bound to happen. You will enjoy a return in due season. That's a fact. Poet Edwin Markham wrote, there's a destiny that marks us as brothers no one goes his way alone, and all that we send into the lives of others comes back into our own. People principle number 23 is the friendship principle, and the friendship principle says all things being equal, people will work with people they like. All things not being equal, they still will. Thoreau said, the most I can do for a friend is simply be his friend. And the question that I must ask myself, am I a friend to the people I work with? There are four levels of business relationships. As soon as you understand the way that relationships affect business, you begin to realize that all business relationships are not created equal. As I have studied the subject, I have focused and I have discovered that there are four levels. Number one is people knowledge. Your understanding of people helps you build your business. In the introduction of this book, I discussed the importance of people skills and business relationships. They are absolutely essential to success. All the product knowledge in the world won't help someone without people skills, nor will technical expertise, nor will the ability to build a brilliantly efficient organization. If individuals don't possess people skills, they very quickly hit a ceiling in their effectiveness people knowledge. But number two is service skills. Your treatment of people helps build your business. Barry Gibbons, the author of this indecision is final, maintains, between 70 and 90 percent of decisions not to repeat a purchase of anything are not about product or price, they are about some dimension of service, of the service relationship. Number three is business reputation. 
Your reputation for relationships helps you build the business. Howard Hotskin said, whatever business you're in, you are in the business of relationships. That's why your reputation is your greatest asset. And then number four, personal friendship. Your friendship with others builds your business. The highest level of business relationships is reached when people like your business, but more important, they like you. When there's a heartfelt personal connection to another person, it becomes stronger than any other kind of business bond. That's why I say all things being equal, people will work with people they like, and all things not being equal, they still will. Friendship is the difference maker. During the war in Vietnam, General William Westmoreland was reviewing a platoon of paratroopers, and he would go down the line and he'd ask them the same question, how do you like jumping? And, you know, they would say, love it, sir. And he just got the same greatest experience of my life, sir. And he just kept getting these wonderful positive things about parachuting. And he came to, down the line and finally came to a soldier and asked him the question, how do you like jumping? And he said, I hate it, sir. And then the general said, well, well then why do you do it? And he said, because I want to be around the guys who do it, sir. It's the whole relationship factor. All things being equal. People will do business with people they like. All things not being equal, they still will. Number 24. People principle number 24, the partnership principle. Working together increases the odds of winning together. Or as tiny Mother Teresa said, you can do what I cannot do and I can do what you cannot do. Together, we can do great things. And the question you must ask yourself, are others better off because of their partnership with me? And my journey to understanding the partnership principle begins like this. Number one, I want to make a difference. Like many people, I started out in what I call the self stage. My focus was on me and what I could do. That's not to say I was doing anything wrong. My motives were positive. It's just that my perspective, along with my effectiveness, was so limited. Then I went to stage two. I want to make a difference with people. When I began to look at myself, I discovered that I could go farther and achieve more when others joined me on their journey. And as a result, I wanted to take everybody with me. It didn't take long for me to realize that was a mistake, and here's why. Not everyone should take the trip passion. Have you ever worked with people who said that they were on board with you and believed in what you were doing to accomplish, yet you kept having to talk them into doing their part? Those people have no passion for their work. They may want to take the ride, but they have no interest in peddling. Take them on and you will wear yourself out. Not everyone wants to take the trip. That deals with attitude. Some people just don't believe in you or what you're doing. That doesn't mean you're wrong or it doesn't make them wrong. It just means you shouldn't try to take them with you. Not everyone can take the trip. Ability. The difference between a partnership, oh, this is a great statement. The difference between a partnership and a rescue mission is capacity. Some people may want to make a difference, but they have no ability to affect what you're doing. You cannot afford to partner with someone with who there is no fit. The main lesson I learned during this phase is that I should try to build relationships with everyone, but I should forge partnerships with only a few. So I've gone from I want to make a difference to I want to make a difference with people to number three, I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference. Okay, uh, we'll stop right here and then we'll come back after 10 minutes. Thank you.